Welcome to Meaningful Moments. Yesterday, I started using a new dating app. I didn't use a new dating app. I heard about a new dating app. <laughs> and it's called S'more. Have any of you heard of S'more before? <laughs> okay, good. <laughs> That's the right answer. <laughs> So S'more is like a more civilized version of Tinder. How many of you have heard of Tinder before? Okay. So the difference is in S'more, you are not given the full image of the potential relationship. So suppose it's me. You would just see a blurred vision of me. And as you get to know the other person more, that photograph becomes clearer and clearer and clearer. And the reasoning behind all of this is that more important than physicality is personality. <laughs> Good for s'more <laughs> for encouraging all of this. I bring this up. <laughs> I bring this up because yesterday I was sharing the vision of Meaningful Mornings began as certainty when we were immersed in indescribable uncertainty, meaningful mornings came in as an expression of certainty. And then this vision evolved to clarity. Just like clarity of that photograph, for us, clarity of who we are, clarity of what we are. For anyone who's felt this clarity over the past four years, now starting five years, what comes with that? Conviction. What comes with that? Confidence. Not the chapter one confidence, but the chapter 18 confidence. And what comes with that? Contentment. The first and foremost sign of a sthita pragnya, of one whose insight is not context-based, but rather content-based, is that they are content. We commenced our 13th semester on January 14th, Sankranti, a transition period for us. From that day onwards, we explored two critical verses of chapter one. Four critical verses per chapter from chapter two to 15. And we took up four critical verses of chapters 16 and 17, but we covered this only over three mornings. That puts us at 66 critical verses. These are 66 verses that are essential love. We completed this on March 18th. That was this past Monday. That is completing four years of meaningful mornings. On March 19th, that was yesterday, the first day of spring, the commencement of our fifth year, we shared our intention statement for the first 17 chapters and the 18th. From yesterday all the way to June 10th, that is a period of 12 weeks 
for 84 days, we will complete this longest semester of Meaningful Mornings ever. On June 10th, we will have invested 1,080 mornings into the Bhagavad Gita. How all of that is aligned is stane. It shouldn't even be ascharya or a wonder to us, but rather an acceptance that divinity is in the details. Divinity is looking after the details. In this chapter, which is the summary chapter of the Bhagavad Gita. The theme or focus is Moksha Sannyasa Yoga. Yoga means the path, the path that flows through Sannyasa, which leads one to Moksha. Shared simply in one English word, this chapter will teach us about liberation. This is what Prince Arjuna will feel as we flow through these verses. He will feel liberated. Liberated from dejection, anxiety, stress. What we should all be feeling is how. What is our yoga? What are the details? For us to follow. Verse 1. Shri Paramatmane Namaha Ata Ashtadasho Dhyayaha Arjuna Uvacha Sanyasyasya Mahabaho Tatvam Ichami Veditum Tyagasya Chahrishi Kesha Pratakeshi Nishudhana Joy. We remember the divine. We commence chapter 18, the final chapter. Prince Arjuna said, We are saying, Mahabaho. And Sarjana is not referring to himself, but rather to Sri Krishna. He now trusts Sri Krishna that this is not his charioteer, this is not his cousin. He is God. Sanyasasya. Prince Arjuna wants to know about Sanyasa. I will go quarter by quarter but I want to pause so each quarter is clear to us. The word sannyasa may trigger different visuals for you. Someone whose name has changed, clothes have changed, and so on. The etymology of this word, some means fully. Ni means down. Asa means throw. Fully down throw or throw down fully. The word sannyasa means to throw down fully. What is to be thrown down fully? The ego. The ego is the most internal facet of who you are, the most inner. Please note I'm saying facet. That means it's not you. There's you, and then there's a facet of you, which is ego, then equipments, then experiences, to throw down fully the ego. One way that we will know that we're following through with this is that we will compete less. I have found amongst us, amongst our communities, amongst our centers, amongst our Mondays, 
the notion of sannyasa, it brings this competition of influence. Who can influence others more? If I'm trying to influence others more, that is coming straight from competition, which is coming straight from ego. Do you recognize that? Do you see this? Yesterday, a Radwian posted was, the more one cares about joy, the less one cares about jealousy. One transcends competition. Second quarter, tatvam. I don't want to know this externally about a change in name and clothes. I want to know the core of what it means to engage in sannyasa, not the ritual, but I want to know the bhava, the feeling. Ichami, this is what I want to know. Veditum, you please teach this to me. Elaborating on this more. One of the best sutras in the Narada Bhakti Sutra, it is Sutra 59 or verse 59, where Rishi Narada shares, Bhakti or devotion does not need another proof. Itself is a proof. Now that sounds scholarly. Here's the implication. Anyone who's devoted to a purpose, to a presence, they cannot and need not prove this. Again, I have found in our community, in our centers, in our mandars, we're very much about proving our renunciation, proving our devotion. The Rishi Narada is sharing, it cannot be proved. It need not be proved. And Puja Swami Tejomayananda had shared, divinity knows. Your guide knows if you have renounced or devoted. This doesn't have to be externalized. We've forgotten this. Renunciation, devotion have become quite external. So I like how this chapter begins. Third quarter. Prince Arjuna wants to know about sannyasa. He also wants to know about tyaga. Shri Krishna, you are Mahabaho. Shri Krishna, you are Rishikesha. I want to know about tyaga. Tyaga is the means to sannyasa. I'm sharing that in advance. This will be built upon in this chapter. Tyaga is the means, sannyasa is the ends. Tyaga is letting go in a relative way. Sannyasa is letting go of the ego. I first have to train to let go of experiences and equipments so that I'm ready to let go of the ego. And that is why from the commencement of Meaningful Mornings, really the next month of Meaningful Mornings, uh, intrinsic to this community has been training in giving. Give your resources, give your time, give your effort so that you're ready for the final giving that is shared in chapter 18 on the ego. But those who have not trained they hold themselves back where there's skepticism. You're still early in the means, not far in the ends. Pritak, give lots of details about this, lots of elaboration. Open this up. Keshi Sudhana. He's praising Sri Krishna so much, almost like, I know you're leaving, so I'm expressing my love to you. Please help me this final time. When we want something, don't we praise others? The way my kids come to me with those eyes and those words when they want Jolly Ranchers. 
<laughs> there are lots and lots and lots of expressions of ego. One of them is the gunas or qualities that is a big component of this chapter. You be careful. What are expressions of your ego that you know about and justify or that you don't know about and you should know about? That's the real sannyasa. I've shared practically, there's no competition of influence. What is your relationship with competition? From inspiration to application, your application yesterday was to pray for our community, pray for me, for Sanatana Dharma, that our TED application that is submitted will be accepted. How many of you prayed? My appreciation to all of you. This is not about me or our community, but rather Sanatana Dharma is about humanity. It is about making the inaccessible accessible. And that's why you would have seen yesterday on social media, we have started our effort for awe. One facet of this, to make water, clear water, accessible to all. Your application for this morning is Chinmay Mission Niagara's e-newsletter came out, I think, a week ago on March 15th-ish. And the theme or the title was, What Distracts You the Most? What Distracts You the Most? I want you to read this e-newsletter. Reflect on what distracts you the most. If what I'm sharing is unknown to you, please subscribe to our e-newsletter. There's a way to do that on our website. Shanti, 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 he, be joy.